the large data set. What a waste of time. Just just don't. Hey guys, if you have taken A-level maths, I am sure you know what the large data set is. And if you don't, I am here to help. It's so pointless, so stupid, but let's talk about it anyway. So if you didn't know what the large data set is, it's basically 10 of these in total. This is just one, and it may look like you have to learn it all, but honestly, you don't. You can break it down just as long as you understand what it sort of means. If you go into your A-level maths exam and say, I'm not going to answer any question at all on the large data set, it probably still won't affect your grade. It's only worth like three marks at the end of the day, so please don't stress about it. It's not really worth your time. Don't even bother answering the textbook questions on it because it's totally random, and you're not really gonna get asked questions like that. But me personally, I did still stress about these things. I thought I can't go into that exam unprepared. So I'm going to show you my revision folder and exactly what I did. However, I do have to advise you to take this all with a pinch of salt because everything I'm saying is from my own large data set. The large data sets change every year and they are different by exam boards as well. So you can see that this is the one I actually had. So we've got all of these different years going across as well as all of these different types of food, which are actually in categories. Then the footnotes at the bottom. And this one is actually for England. So this other one was for London. So yours will be different. It could be about weather, oil prices or anything. I don't know, but this is just a general basic how you can prepare for your own. But let's just all agree that a large data set is stupid. So in the exam, you can get like a scatter graph of the sales of semi-skim milk by the sales of skimmed milk. And then there will be one point labeled A. And then the question will be something like, what region of the UK is point A? And you'll be like, how am I supposed to know that? So really you'd look at it and go point A has the lowest sales for both. So which region of the UK is likely gonna have the least sales? And then you make your guess. It is a little bit of guesswork. Basically what I did is I went on the computer and I spent ages working out the mean across all of the years for all of the different foods and places. Then I put it into a new table and just highlighted the highest and highlighted the lowest. And then it became quite clear which region of the UK was very frequently the highest and which one was frequently the lowest. London was frequently the lowest, so in that instance, I would guess London which is actually the correct answer. So the method did work, although obviously it's probably not foolproof. Some things I really would advise learning though is the footer notes at the bottom of the Excel spreadsheets because they will likely give you some extra information that you may need and they may ask about. And I would also advise learning the things that you have to. So for my food ones, I actually had to learn the areas of the UK because they didn't actually give you them as answers in the exam questions. You would have to know like London is one of the possible answers, England is another. There will be some common answers that you should just learn like all of the values are rounded so it may look like 0 plus 0 is equal in 1 but actually it'll be like 0 0.49 plus 0 0.48 which both round down to 0 will actually eventually round up to 1 and that's why it's like that. So rounding and error in data entries crop up a lot so make sure to learn those answers. And this is my folder here let me show you what I did. So here I just wrote up a list of all of the keynotes at the bottom of the foot page, as well as all of the information from the answers that I've come across in all of the exams. And likewise, I just did a very quick mind map so it stuck in my head a bit more from the muscle memory of making it and also so I can see it all clearly on one page. You also need to make sure that you understand what all of these columns mean as well. And then this is the table that I made from it. So it's all of the different regions with all of the different categories of food with the averages in the boxes and see, and I've just highlighted the highest and the lowest. You also notice that England is never highest or lowest because it's the average of all of them, if that makes sense. I also made this other table with all of the categories of food again, but instead with all the different years rather than the regions. So I did an average of all the regions together so you could see if the trend went up or down. Again, I just highlighted it with highest and lowest. Thanks so much for watching guys. I really hope that helps. Good luck. Bye.